you know, dealing with problems, dealing with conflict. How to resolve conflict and dealing with conflict must happen in our whole mind or from your heart, if you will, while understanding that in human form, that while we're in human form, that we all project a different world. Some people go to great lengths to avoid dealing with conflict, which can lead and backfire into mental or mindful medical and quite often relationship problems and ordeals. Hello everyone, this is James Nussbaumer and I am the author, the proud author of two great books. The first one is the pilot of the ever developing series and it's called The Master of Everything, a story of mankind and the world of illusion that we call life. And its sequel is called Mastering Your Own Spiritual Freedom. Hello, both these books are published by Ozark Mountain Publishing Company and are on sale everywhere books are sold. I call them the whole series uh, a spiritual and inspirational manifesto to a better life. And I'm proud to say that we just signed a contract on the third book called and Then I Knew My True Abundance, which is on its way out and soon to be released. But let me get back to this. You know, if we as humans, if as humans, we can realize that, that the core, that the core of conflict, the core of con conflict is merely just an illusion. If we, can re if we can see conflict as an illusion, and I'll explain in a minute what I mean, then we have an opportunity for tapping our whole mind. Now, I'm not, I don't mean tapping our entire mind. I mean whole, like wholeness, tapping into the whole of who we are. Our whole mind, if you can comprehend that, just try to a little bit. And begin, if we can do this, we can, be, we can begin creating a world for positive change. A Course in Miracles says, which many of you know that I'm so fond of, and, and the story behind how I ran into A Course in Miracles, but A Course in Miracles asks us to, to answer this question. Where all reality has been withdrawn from what was never true, can it be hard to give it up and choose what must be true? What must be true makes no decisions because it has nothing to choose from, nothing to decide from. But if truth could decide on any one thing, it would be to continue being all that it really is, which is oneness or wholeness. How to, re how to resolve conflict cannot be about considering two or more sides to the truth. Oneness is always true, and it has no room for anything else. Trying to understand this can be quite confusing and can be conflicting in our human mind. The ego-based mind, which is that doubting and fearful aspect in us that's always in conflict, relies on conflict to make concrete decisions. The concrete will always give us something to choose from, giving us a reason for decision, which can be complicated. Spiritual freedom is not complicated at all when you know it is one, when you know what oneness is. In oneness, there is no conflict. How can what is whole, how can what is whole or one have any separate side to conflict with? It's impossible. It cannot be complicated because the complexity is gone. To know is merely to accept the truth as all there is in any given situation or matter that you're faced with. Have you ever tried to explain what the truth means? You can't explain it. It's hard to do, isn't it? This is the same as oneness, where nothing conflicts. This is why the ego cannot understand this. There is nothing to decide. One is one, truth is truth, Wholeness is wholeness. There's no separation in wholeness. Truth is all that there is. There's all there is to it. The real world is a choice you make to accept what is real. There's nothing in between. No what ifs, no maybes. The real world is not an outcome. An outcome can only be perceived or projected. Oneness and truth are not separate and have no outcome. It is what it is, always one and whole. If all you can ever have knowledge of is total oneness and truth, you will undo every illusion you have ever had. 
Oneness and truth cannot be sacrificed. Only illusions, only illusions can be sacrificed. There truly is no sacrifice when you let go or surrender the illusion, the illusion of conflict, because it was never real in the first place. If all you are is perfect oneness and truth, you never have a need to sacrifice a single thing. A Course in Miracles goes on to teach us that forgiveness in the world is equal to the justice of heaven. What else could the justice of heaven be other than oneness and truth? In this world, we associate sin with the word forgive. We feel that when we forgive or when we ourselves have been forgiven, that sin is wiped clean. In this case, in this way of thinking, no individual can truly forgive unless he believes, but can never, cannot really truly forgive is what I'm saying, because he's believing in sin or that has been forgiven of his own sin. What I mean is, okay, in previous articles in my books that I've just shown you, I said that true forgiveness is to look beyond the errors in our mind caused by illusion made by the ego. So what that means is to look beyond the ego in all of us to the wholeness where we're all interconnected as one. That is forgiveness, to look beyond the worldly illusions. When you can do that, when you're faced with an argument or something like that with another person, that is true forgiveness. You're looking beyond the unreal to the real and accepting the real. In oneness and truth, there is no such thing as sin. Therefore, you cannot sin. Additionally, we must forgive ourselves for believing in the forgiveness of sin we never had in the first place or ever will have. What is real holds no sin. Anything that is a part of our dream of separation is not real. Okay, if you're a little confused, let me confuse you a little more, but this is a little fun to think about here, what I'm about to say. Okay, remember that the Bible states that Adam fell into a deep sleep. But nowhere in the Bible is there any reference of his awakening because the dream continues to this day. The Bible cannot reference his awakening because we as mankind and the, who wrote the Bible is a part of the dream, we're still dreaming. It's, we've never awakened. So no one can tell of Adam's awakening. The dream has continued. So, yes, Adam was dreaming when he and Eve got caught up in the lies of the serpent. You know, the Son of God, or the child of God, you might want to say, or what, what A Course in Miracles says is the sonship, not a human being, but our connection as one mind that Jesus was here to try to teach us. Of the sonship, the Son of God, is is a interconnection of one mind, the wholeness that we all are. A Course in Miracles states, has not yet ex we have not yet experienced full awakening. This makes a lot of sense to me. Sin is in the dream and not of the dreamer. We as whole, who we are behind illusion, cannot sin. Only the dreaming part of our mind can sin. By forgiving ourselves in this existing and fun awakening type way, we can turn the world of sin and what we the world we think is sin into a world of sinless love with never ending trust, which is the oneness I write about in my books, which is the oneness I'm talking about now. No sadness, no parting, no dealing with conflict because everything is totally forgiven even forgiveness itself. Nothing can be kept separate, not even conflict. In fact, we don't have to figure out how to resolve conflict because conflict in the first place just simply dissolves as we awaken to this oneness. I hope this makes sense, and I had fun talking about this. I know it's quite complex, but it's fun to think about that. I love the part about... Uh, Adam never had awakened from the dream. And if we can look at it that way, that's the whole point of everything. When we're, when we're faced with conflict, 
ease up. Let's back up on ourselves and just be easy and try to look at things in a fun manner. Let's try to look, if we want to be serious, let's overlook our body and go to the real, the realness that we really are, the real, real individual that you are behind flesh and bones. If you can do that on a regular basis, you're on your way to a successful, happy life of inner peace and inner freedom. God bless and I wish the best to you. Thanks for listening to me.